Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm going to be talking to you about some gaming news. We do this periodically on the channel, and it's been a while since the last time uh, we dove into some news. Uh, there's a couple of items I want to cover in some different videos over the coming weeks, uh, but the first one was something that I noticed yesterday, and that is a new game which was announced... I'm not sure if it was announced yesterday on the 24th or if it was a little bit before that, but it seems like it is very recently announced in the last couple of days. I was on Eurogamer.net and there was an article about this upcoming game called The Great War Western Front. It's a new World War I strategy game from the developers of Command and Conquer Remastered. Uh, it was an article by Wesley and Poole. And uh, this is interesting to say the least what you're watching right now is the trailer from the game and it kind of mixes a fair bit of i guess art uh that has nothing to do with the game um you know there's a little image there you saw earlier of uh i assume the assassination of archduke franz ferdinand and then some uh, soldiers shooting each other but then at the end of this trailer here it also has uh some presumably early gameplay for this upcoming game the game appears to be a real-time strategy game uh, that allows you to fight through the First World War. Uh, the Steam page is up, so there's a link in the description if you're interested in checking that out. Uh, the war, uh, the the game will cover 1914 to 1918, so basically the outbreak of the war till uh, perhaps a little bit later if the war lasts longer. There's a really interesting dual role commander uh, aspect to this game. Uh, the Steam page says, discover unparalleled levels of strategic choice as you step into the role of both theater commander and field commander. As theater commander experience enthralling turn-based grand strategy as you direct the redeployment of forces, uh, perform research and carefully consider how to disseminate your resources across the Western Front in a war won by inches. Along the, alongside this, take up the mantle of field commander in a dynamic real-time battle as you direct units to defeat your opponent. Build trenches and perform direct assaults by sending your infantry over the top. Pick your battles and fight your way to shape the course of history. That's, I think, pretty interesting. I, I don't see any screenshots, I don't think, from what the theater commander aspect would look like. It looks like we just have some stills of the tactical map where I'm assuming the field commander stuff occurs. Uh, but the idea of giving you sort of a theater command where you can pick and choose where you're going to attack, how you're going to direct your resources. Uh, it sounds like there might be some research and uh, uh, development stuff, like maybe you're researching chemical weapons, tanks, things like that. Um, the idea of mixing that sort of typical strategic game which we've played a fair bit on this channel in games like strategic command um war, uh, war to end all wars by uh, ajod um you know those types of games uh, those generally look at the strategic level so you get the option of doing research you get the option of moving armies around deciding where to fight but then when armies collide you kind of get a less than combat experience it's fun the games are functionally about being a, about being a, a, a supreme commander whereas there are other games which have the rts element the one that comes to mind the most is a game called 1914 to 1918 battle of empires which are fundamentally just sort of real-time tactical war games looking at world war one so the idea of giving you strategic command and also tactical you know, maybe more and more games are going to try and do this, right? We've got that in Grand Tactician, the Civil War, which we've been playing a lot of on the channel. Maybe that's the direction we're going. Co companies are saying, listen, uh, we're going to go kind of like the Total War route, but maybe without the economic simulations of stuff. Um, I don't know. I'm curious to see what, what comes of this. Again, this is super early. We've got like seven or eight screenshots that have been released. We've got this minute and a half trailer and just a little bit of blurb about the game. Um, some other information that we found out, apparently it's going to have a living world, which means that battlefields are persistent. So it's kind of, I think that's a really cool concept is that like as the front moves back and forth, if you fight a battle in the same place as you fought previously, the damage from that previous battle is still there. So if you built trench lines and then you fight a battle there again, those trenches are still there. If there was an artillery bombardment in the previous battle, craters from that artillery bombardment are still there. Uh, so this idea of sort of a, a living world, as they call it on the Steam page, is interesting, right? Like there are, I think, 
maybe the close combat three on the Russian front. I think I heard that had something similar. So it's not like this has never been done before, but it's still a cool feature to have included in the game. And I think it really also sort of tells something about the First World War. One of the things that you often sort of think about when you think of the First World War is these absolutely barren wastelands of shell craters, mud, trench lines, death, barbed wire, all of this stuff, as if it's just the land plowed over and turned into one giant uh, barren wasteland, you know, almost kind of like a moon face a moon that, that you kind of think about. But it wasn't always like that. Uh, the war wasn't always fought over barren wastelands. The, the landscape of World War I was fundamentally transformed because these front lines moved so little, because there was so much artillery uh, that dropped on these positions, because of the trench system that was set up, the no man's land that was created, the barbed wire that was set up, those those moon surface like shots of World War One evolved over time, and so there really was this sense of transformation of the landscape. And you get a little bit of that in 1918 when there's some successful attacks from both sides that break through the trench lines and get into the rear and push 30, 40 kilometers into the rear. And you see that in in some of the media that covers that. I remember the A&E show a long time ago about the uh, lost battalion, an American battalion that breaks through but then is cut off behind lines. Um, you know, you get that. They move from the trench line into a woodland uh, where there isn't shell craters everywhere. So, you know, I think that's a really true aspect to the First World War that you don't really get in World War II outside of the urban fighting when it turned cities to just piles of rubble uh, because things were so much more mobile. Um, and you don't really see that in other wars as well, like the Napoleonic Wars or whatnot, because there was not the sense of permanence of these front lines the way that there was uh, in the uh, First World War. You get a little bit of that in the siege warfare, you know, games that deal with like the American siege of, of Richmond and Petersburg. Uh, maybe if you have any, I don't know that there's any games, but if you looked at the uh, uh, Crimean War and the siege of Sevastopol, I'm assuming you get some of that. But, um, you know, I think that's a, another sort of really true aspect to the First World War that they're going to be covering. Uh, some other sort of housekeeping. Looks like you can play as either the Allies or the Central Powers. Um, so you have either option um, the factions will have unique abilities and gameplay styles not really sure what that means i mean obviously the french in 1914 had sort of the shock tactic alan style of fighting uh, the british had the rapid firing infantrymen um, the germans kind of the the very large professional force um, and then later in the war you know the the british go all in on heavier tanks the french go with a little bit lighter tanks and the germans kind of lag behind on tank technology um, so it'll be interesting to see how that, uh, how that actually plays out in the game. Um, they claim as many games do, there's no, uh, no one playthrough is the same. Uh, the game changes, uh, each time you play it, apparently we'll see. I don't really know what that means. Um, there's new military technologies that can be unlocked either earlier in the conflict or later, depending on advanced tech tree. Uh, so that could change the way the game is played, but also that, that does confirm what I was saying earlier about, uh, technology and sort of R&D mattering. Um, you can have alternate history, which is cool. I'm curious to see what that looks like. Um, it says there's four deep and compelling modes. Experience the unfolding saga of World War One in the campaign. Relive iconic moments with historical battles or create your own battles in skirmish or test the strategies against other memorable multiplayer action. Your journey through... Okay, I that seems like a strangely worded sentence sentence create your own battles in skirmish or test your strategies against others in memorable multiplayer action okay so i guess there's multiplayer in the game too um i'd be curious if there's co-op that would be cool if you could do co-op on the same side i don't see anything about co-op it's a single player online pvp um also so maybe not uh, the developer is petroglyph games uh, as they mentioned in the trailer and as i already mentioned uh, these are the developers who worked on uh, the Command & Conquer remaster, uh, so that's cool. Uh, it is being published by Frontier Foundry, uh, which is looks like they work with the, the developers quite a bit because their list of games are all, all the same pretty much on the Steam page. 
Uh, so it's, you know, I'm excited. I'm curious to see how this will all unfold. Some other things that I'm really curious to see, the trailer makes it look like there's going to be a lot of troops involved. So uh, again, there's not a ton that we've seen here, but the screens do look relatively big. I guess it'll be interesting to see how much you can scroll, how big the maps really are. Uh, there certainly seem to be a lot of soldiers on the map. Um, so that's uh, good to see. Um, I guess, again, it'll depend on how big the map are, is and how zoomed out we are in some of these screenshots. Uh, but it'll be, I, I'm curious to see how this plays. Uh, again, it does look like there's a fair number of soldiers. There's definitely tanks involved. There's definitely artillery involved. Uh, you can't have a, a, a World War One game without machine guns. Uh, you've got different tank styles. You can see some screenshots with the British Mark V or whatever it was, the German uh, weird boxcar tank. Uh, and then, uh, and then soldiers, uh, again, I, I don't really know what else to say. We don't know much else about this, uh, but I'm, I'm certainly intrigued and I just wanted to mention it to you guys. Also in the trailer for the game, it definitely looked like there was a huge explosion in the middle of the map, which could have just been some kind of video editing thing to try and make it look cool. But I'm hopeful that also might mean that there may be big mines you can detonate under the trenches, uh, like happened in the war. Uh, that would be a cool technology to be able to uh, unlock to see if it can help you break through the front by using mines and engineers to dig tunnels. Oh, one other piece. This trailer doesn't seem to have any UI in it, which is fine for more cinematic shots and just trying to give people a sense of the game. Uh, but it doesn't really give us a sense of like how you control units. Uh, are individual soldiers controllable? Kind of like in a lot of RTSs like the Command & Conquer games these guys worked on before. Are they grouped into units? You know, how do you command units? What are form like our formations used? Are there groupings of soldiers like squads? How do you equip troops, raise troops? Like we don't know any of that stuff. Uh, so we'll we'll see. Hopefully, we learn more soon. Uh, but uh, yeah, those are some of the things that stood out so far. Um, this game is called the Great the Great War Western Front. There's a link to the description, or sorry, there's a link to the game in the description. Uh, and I think that's all I really have to say here. Oh, uh, launch date. You're probably curious about that. Uh, it looks like the Steam page says the game is coming out in 2023. Um, so again, it was just announced. I don't know if that's early or late. I would guess by the trailer, which does look a little bit laggy. I'm assuming that's like alpha footage or something like that. We're probably looking more toward mid to late 2023. Just sort of my hunch. Uh, but I guess we'll share more when we know more. Let me know your thoughts, though, guys. Are you interested in this? Is this a game that you'd be uh, interested in picking up? Uh, what are your thoughts about sort of a World War One game that mixes sort of theater command, which is probably more operational than strategic, and then uh, tactical command as well? Um, and then also, you know, is this going to be interesting? Are you just going to be ramming your head against a brick wall during the trench? era or is there going to be enough diversity in play styles and technologies and things you can unlock uh, to make the game interesting i don't know but i guess we'll find out uh, anyway guys that's going to do it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed uh, this little news report if you will and until next time this is the historical gamer saying once again thank you very much for watching and i'm out